we think about the employer's opportunity for building health and well-being as focusing on four pillars, the first being uh, employee health, second being consumer health, third being environmental health, and fourth being community health. When you think about you know, those four ways in which employers might lay down their health footprint, uh, what needs to happen in order for collaboration to occur is for the people responsible for those four areas to have ways of coming together to work to work together, to think through their strategic planning together, to think about opportunities for, for synergy and leverage um, together, but, um, but to work together. Intra-organizational collaboration versus inter-organizational collaboration. I appreciate the, the, the fact that you know, they're closely related in, in their terminology. One way of thinking about it is just internal collaboration versus external collaboration. So intra-organizational collaboration means the kind of collaboration inside the organization. Um, there we're thinking about you know, which, which, in, which people with responsibility for those four different pillars, the employee health, the consumer health, the environmental health, and the community health are working on those different pieces. And we're hoping that um, uh, people with those responsibilities can, can come together uh, internally to collaborate. And external collaboration or inter-organizational collaboration really looks at the kind of collaboration that involves working with other entities outside the organization to work together to try to impact uh, health and well-being through uh, efforts uh, in the community or through the industry. When I think about what to do first, internal or external collaboration or intra versus inter-organizational collaboration. It's a really great question. And I think if I were to reflect on it from what I know about various organizations, my, my guess is that it happens uh, differently in different organizations. And I, I think it depends. You know, there might be some organizations that are called upon by virtue of some crisis in the community where they really need to, to uh, engage uh, and get to work. I mean, I think of um, the GE Corporation when it came to Boston. Uh, there was an opioid epidemic going on at the time, and they needed to engage collaboratively in the community in order to, to take that on. Um, in, it, uh, in other instances, it may be that they choose to focus on their uh, employee well-being and getting their own kind of ducks in a row internally with respect to their products and services and their minimum footprint. Um, uh, having people work together uh, inside the organization might be the first thing to do, but I do think it could happen either way. Companies that are successful uh, collaborating and, and what they look like, I'd say that they have spent time focusing on how to integrate across the different dimensions of, uh, of health. So they have taken health-related efforts across the organization, their product design and quality assurance folks from the consumer health piece, their benefits and human resources people from the employee health side, their community relations and foundation uh, people, as well as their sustainability leaders. And they've, they've found ways of, of bringing them together and they've integrated those uh, those services within the organization. They've incorporated health impact considerations into the decision making of the organization as they go forward. They measure and they report how they're doing with respect to each of these um, aspects of, of culture of health. Uh, and they probably have uh, also experienced a shift in mindset. So they're not thinking about these pillars separately. They're thinking about health uh, the health impact of their company as broadly as possible in ways that uh, encompass all four pillars. With respect to the attributes that characterize organizations that do collaboration well, first with respect to the internal collaboration, the intra-organizational collaboration, I think what you see are uh, physical and governance structures that spur collaboration. So people are co-located or at least proximately located. The uh, C-suite has overarching responsibility for all the different areas. The committee structure uh, and the membership of the committees uh, cuts across those different pillars and the processes, the systems, the rewards and, and other practices across the organization um, uh, are shared across those pillars instead of separately. With regard to the inter-organizational collaboration, the collaboration that happens external to the organization, we're actually doing new research to try and understand what kind of 
attributes characterize those collaborations. And we're learning a lot. We're learning about things like um, uh, all of the organizations that are collaborating need to have a certain capacity to be able to um, participate in the collaboration. It's not just a, uh, it's not something that just happens. They need to really invest in uh, the resources to work together with outside organizations. There needs to, uh, they're benefited by having real clarity of purpose. So they know kind of what they will do and they know what they're not, uh, what they shouldn't do. Uh, they need to be responsive to each other uh, within the collaboration. They need to build strong relationships so that they have a foundation of trust that allows for the collaboration collaboration to uh, merge and to grow uh, in ways that are uh, flexible and responsive to the to the needs of the collaboration itself as it goes. Uh, the structure of the collaboration should uh, can be of many different forms, but it should really fit with the goals of the collaboration. Um, there should be mutual understanding between the collaborators. So uh, again, it's about the the trust um, so that they can build uh, build and evolve together over time. Um, uh, constructive ambiguity is one of the really interesting findings I think from this work. It suggests that the um, uh, that language is critically important. That you need to have uh, you need to have language that allows people to draw from their own mindset and be able to sort of translate the words into their own language for purposes of their kind of nonprofit goals or, or alternatively for purposes of their for-profit goals, um, but enough clarity that allows them to work together. That may be the trickiest part of these collaborations, but, but hope we've seen, um, we've seen collaborations that are successful and hopefully more of them will be.